What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Elias Atti. Uh, if you've watched videos on the channel before, then you already know who I am. Otherwise, I'll give you a bit of a quick introduction. So I've made a career out of my passion for IT, uh, particularly all things cloud. So I've had many roles in the IT industry over the past, I think I'm going to say 12 years or so. Um, and I've gone pretty much from service desk all the way to a principal consultant, which is my most uh, recently held role and one that I currently hold now. But I'm also a director in a company that um, provides services, professional services and managed services. So my a bit of quick background of mine is that when I was young, I was always very, very interested in IT. Um, I used to do lots of things that uh, other kids weren't doing at the time. So my, some of you might remember things like Merck, uh, M-I-R-C, I-R-C-Q, uh, sorry, I-C-Q, um, little programs like that that were around when I was younger. I used to write scripts in, in Merck and make trivia bots and all sorts of those little things, make websites in the early early ages of the internet, like using Microsoft Front Page and Dreamweaver and things like that. So I was, had, always had a really strong interest and then I started building computers when I was really young and I just really was into the whole industry and, and the actual uh, field. So eventually when I got to later years in school, I ended up, taken a bit of a, um, a different path where I went moved uh, I had a strong interest in automotive so I loved cars and everything related to cars but when I left school I was actually a mechanic so I'd done my uh, well I was in a first I was in a four-year apprenticeship of uh, being a mechanic and I didn't make it past the first and as uh, when I when I left I actually moved into IT and at the same time I also started a bachelor of Compu bachelor of computing at uh, University of Western Sydney uh, and then I my first ever IT role was a service desk analyst at a large managed services provider here in New South Wales Australia uh, and that was a pretty interesting role actually um, when I say interesting, I mean as interesting as service desk gets, mostly just password resets and user administration and things like that. But I did find myself very quickly um, starting to do things like, I guess, trying to, I just guess, improving service from a technical point of view. So, for example, uh, where someone would be doing a repeated task all the time. Um, I'd always be thinking of ways to automate that because I had that in my head like from when I was doing things on Merck and um, and just general little scripting things that I did in, on websites and stuff. I always had it in my head that you can automate a lot of things. So very quickly found myself automating user administration, for example, creating scripts that will run and deploy batches of users or terminate batches of users because some of the some of the clients that I was working on required like lots of users to be um, deployed and terminated um, on a monthly basis, for example. So from there, I moved into a what we call here a desktop role. I've seen a lot of people call it end user computing role or maybe like a level two help desk role where you're more uh, hands, hands and feet, uh, more client facing. Um, and you're more going to see clients and going to their offices and providing um, support services. So I found myself in that role, um, which I enjoyed. I enjoyed meeting people and, and meeting customers and talking directly face-to-face -face with them. And then I moved into a like a network, um, a knock role. So a monitoring role, network and server monitoring role. Um, at the time, they called it like event management. Um, and this was at another managed services provider in, in New South Wales, a large one as well. Uh, they called it, a, yes, it was it was an event management team. So when I, when I came in, there was like 10,000 false positive alerts a day. And our job was to bring it down to something where it's actually usable. Because when you have too many false positives, then people miss the actual the alerts that require attention as well 
So we brought that down from like 10,000 or something like that down to about 10 a day. Uh, and that's just by deploying a new tool and phasing out the old tool. And, and it became a very good event management desk. And I believe that it's still running really well. A good friend of mine runs that operation uh, or runs that team. And he reports that it's actually running very well. And it's, it's actually very impressive. Probably one of the better ones I've seen. I've, I've worked at a few managed service providers. So that, that one was actually pretty good. From there, I moved in the same company. I moved to a uh, level three server engineer role. That was interesting. So that was good because that company wasn't massive. So there wasn't that much red tape. I was allowed to do whatever I wanted. So uh, if I wanted to log on to a Linux server, even though I was Microsoft focused, I was able to log on to Linux server. And I did. I did do a lot of Red Hat support there actually for for um, for an amount of time uh, for a large client as well. Some Red Hat support and became really good at what I do, um, like as a system engineer, and then moved to uh, back to the first managed service provider that I ever worked at as a senior system engineer. When I came on board there, um, there was a new client that was coming onto the support, and that client had Citrix Cloud. Now, Citrix Cloud was brand new at the time. Uh, they were one of the first organizations to use Citrix Cloud and they had also moved all their servers and their whole environment into Microsoft Azure. And they were just moving into the support phase. So there was little bits and pieces of the project left, which I sort of assisted with, put my hand up for and helped out with. But most of the larger project was done and there was more of a support uh, role. I took, I took that client and took that contract and I really owned it. I was the go-to support guy for that contract and I became very close with the customer and I became very close with uh, all the people that worked on that contract, which then led me to my next role at that same service provider as a solution architect. So by that time, I had really, really got involved in everything Microsoft Azure related and a lot of Citrix cloud stuff. And that was where my passion really was in Microsoft, in the Microsoft space, but mainly in Microsoft Azure. So when I started diving into Microsoft Azure, I, I was picking it up very quickly. I was doing the certifications. I was, I was deploying things in my spare time. I was studying in my spare time. I was running little pox just out of interest because I found it interesting. And yeah, it was great. It was a great role. Uh, then as, as a solution architect, yeah, that, that was a great role as well. I, I loved the team that I was working at the time. Uh, my manager was great and my teammates were great. And I was able to go into multiple clients. I was still mainly focused on one client at a time, but I did have other interactions with other clients too. But yeah, it was, it was a great role. Uh, and that's when I sort of said to myself, okay, um, it's time to go out and contract. Uh, I felt like I was getting, I had done everything I wanted to within that managed service provider. I had achieved a lot of my goals and I feel like I wanted to become more independent because I found that I was really making good relationships with clients. And not only did I feel like I had the technical skills and the skills to um, put together solutions and deploy the solutions because I had the architect experience and the engineer experience, but I also felt like I was able to talk to customers very well and that I had something a bit different about me that allowed me to talk to customers in a different manner than that what they're used to when they're speaking to IT people. So that's when I went out with a good friend of mine um, who started his own business and I began working with him. Uh, so a good friend of mine at the time that I also worked with, he established his own managed service provider and professional services provider, and he wanted to use me as the principal consultant. So I started helping him with that, and that's where I've been for the past year or so. And in that year, we have worked on many, many, many clients, and we've built many, many new relationships 
And in the past six months or so, I've opened that same branch of that managed service provider, which is Quantec. I can tell you the name. It was Quantec uh, Pty Ltd. I've opened that branch in Canberra, uh, where there is lots of government organisations and there's lots of federal clients and there's also private companies as well. Um, and I'm looking to grow the business here. And I'm a director on this side, so I, I'm, I'm in partnership with my friend who started the New South Wales company. Um, and I come out here on my own and I, I like to um, sort of build the relationships here and I'm getting things going and we're getting work and things are moving. And yeah, feels good. So that is my life in IT for the past 12 or 10 or 12 years, I think it was. Um, I think I would like to share that information with with you guys, share more and more about how I got here, and I'd love to answer any questions. So let me know any questions you have in the comment section below or send me a message. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.